Hey everyone, we are spontaneously going to the Schaumburg, Illinois NARBC or North American Reptile Breeders Conference and we decided this two days ago? Maybe three. Three days ago, maybe. But yay, reptile show! Going! The funny thing about this show is it's on a Saturday and a Sunday, and our shop is open on Saturday, which is tomorrow. It's Friday night currently, and we ditched everyone. Good luck, employees. Good luck. You can do it. We believe in you. We have uh, three employees working, one of which just became a lead yesterday, and we're leaving the entire store to them. We trust Kim. She's You'll got do it. Great. Kim, Vicky, and Madison will take care of everything. They're gonna do awesome. The I'm worst thing that could happen is the building burns down, and we collect insurance. Money. Money, right? And then we start over. Yeah, we. Oh, wait. Don't do that. Oh, yeah. I don't, don't want to start do that, this new thing over. Okay. We'll be fine. We're actually going to the show in hopes to get some animals for uh, our retail side of the facility. We'll probably do some preliminary research on species we want to have in the zoo, but we're probably not going to be getting any at this show because we don't have enclosures ready for them in the zoo and we want to make sure everything is set up first before taking any of those home. So yeah. we'll do research here, we're gonna film, and we're going to get animals for the shop. So now we get a six hour drive. And what is it, eight right now? It's eight o'clock. Oh no. We're gonna get there at 2 a.m. We might have to stop someplace before that. Yeah, probably. <laughs> Good news, we made it all the way to Schaumburg tonight, and it is a five minute drive from the hotel to the convention center. But the bad news is it's 2 a.m. and to make the most out of our day at the show, we have to be there at 7.30 a.m. So we're going to bed. We'll see you tomorrow. It's 6.30 a.m. It's almost time for the show. Ed, wake up, wake up, wake up. It's time for the show, it's time for the show. Wake up! Let's go! Let's go! Let's go! We had plenty of sleep! Come on! Let's go! Let's go! Let's go! Let's go! Yeah! Whoa! How did that happen? Now we're here! Okay, what are we gonna do first? Uh, look for stuff to buy. Look for stuff to buy! On it! Well, we made it to inside the building, and then we realized our camera was dead. So, back out in the parking lot we are! Can you tell me about the lightning morph? I've never heard of that before. Oh yeah, absolutely. That's a, a newer morph that I ha had the good fortune to discover. I lived in Northeast Arkansas for a few years, um, several years ago. And one day while I was in the shower, a friend called and said a white snake was crawling up their tree. And so I rushed over there and this is a, what we believe to be a T positive black rat snake. And so I, I did collect it completely legal in that state with fishing license. Yep, yep. <laughs> and uh, it's a male, and so I bred it to some locality female, so it's also a locality project, which is cool. And the first year, obviously, it being a recessive, you never know until you breed these things if it's right. gonna be a codom or a recessive morph. Not to get all geeky and sciencey, but you guys understand that. Oh, we get that, that. Yeah. yeah, oh yeah. So it produced animals that look sort of like this, which is a typical hatchling black rat. And then after a couple years of raising those up and breeding them back to the male, proved it to be recessive. And so this is a two-year-old female that is a visual from the project. And I've got some other folks that have bought visuals and are working the project. So, and because it was in a full-on lightning storm and standing on an aluminum ladder, I named the morph the lightning rat snake. So that's the story behind it. Risk, risk my life. I think that fits. Yeah, new, that's a great name idea. For a new morph in the hobby. I mean, what luck to come across one of these in the wild. Like, as, first off, a snake that, lover that to find them in the wild. That is nuts. I love hearing how new morphs are discovered. Like, sometimes they just pop out of random, like, randomly in clutches. And sometimes you find 
a morphed animal in the wild that somehow survived up until that point because this isn't natural camouflage, but <laughs> it survived and then now it's in captivity. Here's a male from the first breeding that came out looking normal and then turned Whoa, into this. That's a black rat? Yeah. Wow, it's and copper. So I sort of think that there's almost like a codom thing and a recessive thing because none of the other visual babies have this color. Okay. So I'm thinking like that one got the color and the T positive. So this gene. is like the super form of the I white. don't know. I guess we don't it's know take yet. years of breeding yeah. it to You'll have to keep of. experimenting until right. you know what it is for sure. So if anybody wants to uh, check out the project and its status, go check out Scott's Great Snakes. Okay, so far we have bought some hog noses and some corn snakes and some isopods, but we don't have a hotel room, so we're asking friends of ours who are vending if we can shove our animals under their tables. So, thank you for letting us store our snakes here. <laughs> okay, the show's been open for three hours now, and so far, so good at the shop, I yeah. think. Yeah, like, Kim messaged me and wanted to know if she could use a rack in some place. So I was yeah. like, go for it. They're doing great at the yeah. shop. It hasn't burned down yet. My hair is all over the place today. It's cute. We're also buying ball pythons <laughs> for the retail. Look, and we have Viv Tag. Viv Tag. Just launched uh, today for the show, I think. Yeah. yeah. Go check them out. They have really cool products coming out. We're we'll doing a video all about them here sooner or later. Yeah, and we're going to go buy more snakes. Yep. Okay, so we're having lunch. It's a very healthy lunch consisting of mostly cheese curds. Oh, there's a, there's and a wrap. wrap. Okay, fine. Yeah, that makes it healthy. And uh, do you want to explain what you're doing? I'm spying on our employees. <laughs> I feel like such a creep. That's, there's Madison. Oh, yeah. And Vicky's behind Madison. Yep. And Kim is over here getting crickets right now. Ah. I can show you that by flipping to another camera. <laughs> I feel like this is, I don't know, it's just weird spying on. I mean, there's Kim. There's Kim. Nice. Aw, they're all doing so well. Yeah, they are. Look at those happy customers. Yeah. Oh, there they go. People are checking out. This is so <laughs> weird to look at. This is the live cam, too. <laughs> nice job, everyone. Yep. You're doing great without us. Oh, at... wait, no. that Madison was over there. That is Kim over there. Oh, whoops. We mixed you up. Yep. Sorry, guys. Oh, I feel like a helicopter parent leaving their kid at daycare for the first time. Like, I just want to make sure they're all okay. Okay, I think we officially found the prettiest ball python at the show. What? There's so many things going on. Can you explain what's happening here? Yes, it's a albino enchi chimera I produced last season, which is one animal with two separate genetics. That's insane. So it's not a paradox? Not a paradox because the mother had only enchi and no visual albino. <laughs> and he proved out both. And actually, if you look at the eyes, his eyes push through peaks sometimes. Oh my gosh. Are you holding him back then for breeding? Yeah, he's definitely a hold back for us. That's amazing. Where can people go to watch him grow up? So if you look me up on Kenny Velez on Facebook, you'll see him as my profile picture, and I post pictures of him all the time. Wow. Thanks for bringing him. So it's a... Uh... Five o'clock. I think it's like five, ten minutes past five. Yeah, the show is closed. We got a box of goodies. There's a lot of stuff in there, yeah. but we realized we hadn't filmed anything yet, really. So, so, oh look, crickets, we can get those. So we're gonna quick film things and try to make a video out of this. Sure. Ryan, we're filming your stuff while you're not here. Sorry, love your products though. Hope you had a good day. Okay, uh, I can Timberline. Film. Timberline, okay. I can film this. Oh, look at the racks. Yeah, nice racks. Can even do a shot like this. Ooh, isn't that, actually, that's really nice. Oh, what brand was this?
Well, they turned the lights down. I think that means we can't film anymore. So, goodbye, Schomburg. Awesome show. I wish we had filmed more. Well, would you look at this? We have a couple new box turtles for our adoption island. We have a little three-toed box turtle, and we have an ornate box turtle to adopt out after their quarantine. And they're healthy other than this guy needing a beak trim. He looks like a little bulldog. They've been taken care of by our friends Ben and Brenda at Fire and Ice Reptiles, where they were surrendered in North Dakota, but they weren't able to find them a new home. So we're gonna take it, take it from here. And what are you doing? Um, I'm just checking on the employees, trying to figure out why this rock is in the middle of the... <laughs> why do they put like, a it's, rock it's, there? It's only, it's like almost five. Why is there a rock in the middle of the floor? Is that Vicky oh, and Kim? That's Kim. Okay. Oh, uh, okay. Oh, I think that's Kaiba in her hand. Is she holding Kaiba? Her ball python? Yes. <laughs> oh my god, she was. Nice. It's like the Lion King <laughs> is happening in our store. Well, that was interesting. Yeah, that was interesting. All what right. did you what? Oh, what is Vicky doing with the gnome? What are they both doing with the gnome? <laughs> That's creepy. Uh, and then they left him there. <laughs> oh. oh, no, we're worshiping oh, no. the gnome. <laughs> this isn't good. He's taking over while we're gone. Oh, no, he's brainwashing them. <laughs> and then somebody comes in. <laughs> oh my gosh, did a customer just come in to that scene? Oh, I swear we're professionals, people. Yes, we're, we are professionals. And that's what happens when we're gone. All right, I guess we can't leave very often. Uh, that's amazing. The gnome tries to take over this facility. <laughs> Well, the show is done for the day, so we have about an hour and a half to kill, maybe get a bite to eat, and then we're gonna go to the auction, which all proceeds benefit US Arc, which is amazing. So we're gonna hit that up next. Item number 77, so you're buying the commemorative surfboard, really cool original artwork done by the young lady holding it, Adeline. I got $200 bid here before it's 225 I got 500 600 700 Chris, I mean 750 750 Doug, 800 You got 1000 I got 1000 Stacy and stuff, I need 1050 Time went 147307 Would anybody like to bid more than 147307 Chris would. Jason, find out what Chris would like to bid. Chris bet $1,500. I need $1,600. 1600 Todd Goodman. I need $1,700. $1,700, Chris from C Serpent. Todd has $1,941 hairs. $2,000 going once, $2,000 going twice. $2,000, Chris from C Serpents. I need $2,100. $2,100 going once. $3,000, Todd Goodman. We're just done after this. Everybody can just go home. We have 3101 from Todd Goodman. 3800 Chris from Sea Servants. $4,000 Todd Goodman. 41 going once, 41 going twice. Auction is done. We right. bid on a boa for yeah. the shop. Got a boa and a plate of cookies that we gave away. Yeah, yeah, we bought a ton of cookies that we just yeah. shared with everyone. Usually food goes for a lot more than it should at these auctions, but it all benefits US Arc, yeah, so exactly. it's it's good. Now we are going to try to go home. It is five. Nine. It's almost nine and it's five and a half hours. We're not making it home tonight. We have to be at our shop at 11 a.m. tomorrow. We both have a spare set of clothes, so I think we're going to get a hotel Yeah. Uh, above Madison, hopefully. And then we'll only have about three hours to go to home. Guess we'll see how far we make it tonight. Yep. Well, our original plan was to stay at the auction until about 7.30 last night and then head home, make it home at a halfway decent time. We stayed because it was so much fun until it wrapped up at 9, meaning we made it part of the way home, couldn't drive anymore because we were just too exhausted, and we uh, found a hotel. So now it's the morning, and we have to somehow be at our shop again in two and a half hours when our employees arrive because we technically open in three and a half hours. So we're gonna rush back and skip home and just go directly to the shop, I think. Hooray. We're back! And the building hey. didn't burn down. Nope, it's 
plants still standing. Yeah, we have to trim those plants. Yes, we do. Oh, oh Amelia's already here. Yep. Nice! And another day begins. Hooray! They did it! Yay! And we are back! And this is what we brought home with us, plus yes. another box. But there's not much in the other box, so we'll do that one second. Let's unbox this one first. Let's show you everything that we came home with. First, we got a unicorn from that, the auction. That was my purchase. That was Ed's purchase. Yeah. He likes unicorns, I guess. I do. Uh-oh. So this is also an auction purchase. This is a Sun Glow Boa Constrictor, a little boy. And this was a donation by, looks like, Easel Reptiles. So they donated this snake for the auction and all proceeds went to US Arc, which is the United States Association of Reptile Keepers. And they do a lot of good work for preserving our rights to keep reptiles in captivity. So that's what the entire auction benefited last night, which is why we're like, yeah, you know, we can bid on a couple things. He is beautiful. Gorgeous. Oh my gosh, the Sun Glow Morph is just amazing. Yeah. Okay, so we'll put you in here. Then from another breeder, we got four corn snakes to sell in the retail area. He was just trying to uh, get rid of like all of his baby corns on Saturday. So we're like, yeah, we can take these. There's a, a, a snow tessera, there's an anery tessera, another anery tessera, and this one is an amelanistic palmetto actually. So this little guy is going to look beautiful as an adult. It'll look like he'll have colored sprinkles all the way down his back. And this one was for sale as a pet only because he has the bug eye mutation. So he was born with bigger eyes than he should. So it's something that you can't, you don't want to raise this up and breed him, but for a pet, he'll be just fine. Yeah, uh, you can kind of see how buggy they are. But yeah, he'll be a great pet for somebody. So we're gonna have him for sale in the store too. Over here we have the anery tessera corns. So to explain that more, the tessera gene makes this stripe look down their body and the anery gene removes the red coloration or red pigmentation in the scales. So that leaves us with kind of a gray looking snake. You may have heard of the term azanthic, which is a morph that removes the yellow pigmentation in snakes, but for corn snakes, it's the anery that gives them this look. So yeah, beautiful little anery tessera there and another one right here. And then we have a snow tessera. So again, tessera, you can see the stripe down the back and the snow is a combination of anery and albino just like or very similar to what we see in bull snakes and hog noses except instead of anery it's azanthic for them so sorry a lot of genetics talk there hopefully some people will find that interesting but yeah we bought some uh, wholesale corn snakes from a really good breeder to have in our store and then we got isopods from isopod.com's booth these were all on sale too which is pretty sweet we have armadillo officinalis or officinalis officinalis sorry these are the hissing isopods and these are the very dramatic ones too they yep. are uh, always rolled up when you even look at them this one has granulated isopods it's a, an armadillidium species so they roll up as you can see here and they get the granulated name because the they have these beautiful little yellow specks on their body there's one yeah so you can kind of see that granulated look i think they're really pretty mm -hmm. Here's more granulatums. And actually these aren't scared so you can really see the speckling yeah. there. We also got a bunch of springtail cultures for the shop. Oh super, we have springtails? Yes. Dude, someone was just looking for them. Were they oh, really? Nice. Yeah, absolutely. Well, oh. here you go. Thank you so much. That's good timing. <laughs> Next was kind of an unexpected animal to bring home. There are two box turtles in here that were surrendered for our Adoption Island program, actually. They've been in this box for the car ride home and they already made that much of a mess. So yeah, we're going to quarantine these guys and then adopt them out and give them a beak trim. Yep. <laughs> Next vendor we bought some snakes from was the same guy, Scott's Great Snakes, who we bought this Stillwater Bull Snake from a couple of Tinley shows ago. He's doing really well. We bought this guy as a hatchling uh, with the plans of breeding him to our female Stillwater Bull Snakes, but he's still growing up. He has yep, a, a little beautiful. bit more to grow. Yeah, he is gorgeous though. So we stopped by Scott's booth again just to see what he had. And since he had heard of us and saw what we were doing with this guy and how well he was doing, he trusted us to purchase a clutch of newly hatched Mexican black king snakes. These are just going through their first shed. They haven't even had their first meal yet. So we didn't have those on the table for sale. He was just, if he happened to come across someone who he trusted to take them, he would sell them. And we happened to see them and, and bring them with us. So we're going to get them eating and then put them uh, up for sale as well. Are you ready to go back? You're like super squirmy. Okay, I'm gonna put him back. We got another really cool snake from Scott too. We also got this beautiful albino conda hognose snake. You are just 
stunning little dude. And we're expecting our own albinos and albino condos soon. All the eggs are in incubation right now from Charlotte and Bueller. But we saw this guy for sale and we're like, oh my gosh, we need him. I don't know if we're going to keep him or sell him, but we know that people up here are looking desperately for hog noses available. And now I think this one's a boy, if I remember correctly. Oh yeah, look at that long, oh, thick yeah, tail. tail. That's a boy. Did you just say that's a tail? That's a tail. Next, we ended up buying out a wonderful breeder of crested geckos and gargoyle geckos. So these beautiful, beautiful geckos came from a great breeder at the show, and they even wrote down all the morphs of all the geckos so we know what they technically are, since crested gecko morphs aren't genetic, like recessive or dominant. There's really only one, the lily white morph. But everything else is a line bred trait with these guys. So this is a partial pin citrus crested gecko. A full pin stripe crested gecko has these raised ridges along the sides are completely cream colored all the way down. So a partial pin's ridges are broken up. So as you can see right here, there's a little bit on either side that doesn't have that cream color. And it doesn't so, start all the way at the top. And instead. it doesn't start all the way to, yeah, that's true. That's true. So yep, this is a partial pin citrus, got that nice orange color. And then in here we have a male tiger and this is a frog butt, which is the term used for when crested geckos drop their tail. They're therefore called frog butts because they don't regrow their tail. So this one's actually a tiger morph, not really morph, but you know, they ha it has tiger striping along the sides and along the back. So yeah, there's a bunch of interesting names for the variations of the uh, colors and patterns that uh, you see in crested geckos. But again, none of them are genetic except for the lily white. We've got all these crested geckos. Here's the gargoyle geckos. Here's probably my favorite one. This yeah. is a red slash orange stripe gargoyle. Look at those colors. Aww. Wow, you are so pretty. Yeah, we have four beautiful gargoyle geckos that we got. Oh my gosh, look at this. We had an escapee. Oh, are the other bags full still? Uh, you're in your bag. That was yours. And you're in yours. Okay, okay good. good. How did you get out? Oh, it became untied. Ah, okay, yep, that was, that was us. Then. Well, I guess you'll be first then. This is a banana morph ball python, which is my favorite morph. Bananas are just great. We got not only one banana, not only two bananas, but three banana ball pythons. I have a big soft spot for the banana morph, and they seem to be really popular at the store too. So we found three at the show for a pretty good price, so we'll be able to uh, have them available in our shop. If you notice though, one of them's a little bit different than the other two. That's because this guy, they're all boys, this guy is a cinnamon banana um, granite, actually. So it's uh, got a couple extra genes going on too, but all three of them are beautiful. It's like a ripe banana versus overripe banana. Yeah! <laughs> So this is everything we got from the NARBC in Schaumburg. It was awesome being at a reptile expo again. It had been way too long and it, we've never come home with this many animals before. No. This is crazy. It was really weird just being like, yeah, we'll buy that and we'll buy yeah, that and we'll I'll buy that. I'll buy all those. Yeah, sure. Yeah, we've got a shop. Yeah. And again, that's why we bought this many animals is this was the perfect opportunity to meet good breeders in person and look at their animals in person instead of talking to people online and looking at pictures. We could actually look at these animals animals, which was amazing. And we didn't have to pay for shipping. And we didn't have to pay for shipping, just hotel rooms and gas, which yeah. might have been more than shipping. Maybe. But we had fun. But we had a lot of fun. <laughs> and thankfully, Kim, Vicky, and Madison held down the fort here at the shop. They did such oh, a great job. They rocked it here they yesterday. They did. They did like extra tasks too. It came, we came back and the building was a lot cleaner even and more yeah. organized than when maybe we left. Maybe we should leave more often. Ooh, maybe we should. So thank you to all of the amazing breeders who worked with us for these and just to everyone who went to NARBC. It's such a fun event and it helps support USARC, which is a great organization too. Yeah. We had a blast and we cannot wait until the October show. We'll be there all weekend. We will. <laughs> that was the only downside to this show is we could only stay on Saturday. Yeah. I really wish we could have stayed longer, but we couldn't like, leave the shop yeah. longer than we, we did. We were overly tired the entire day but we got to meet a lot of amazing people which was awesome so thank you guys so much for watching today's adventure to the Schomburg show and what we picked up at the show I hope you enjoyed it and thank you as always to our patreon backers who help us out a ton your contributions will be helping out these box turtles that were surrendered for adoption in our adoption island program actually so thank you everybody involved and let's see who all we met at the show
and we're gonna go back in and go to the auction, which completely benefits the NA NARBC, not that one. USR, thank you. Where can people see him grow up? Where are you, um, uh, sorry. Uh, I'll ask that again and then <laughs> right this time. These are the hissing cockroaches. Yeah. Cockroaches, sorry. <laughs> Give that, uh, isopods. <laughs> Well, you gotta say something now, and now we're filming. Yeah, now it's just filming you. Check Woo. out NARBC. Perfect.